so navigation for uh, tax configuration is from uh, financial define common uh, financial uh, configuration and from there we will have the tax configuration so this is similar to our uh, ebs setup where we will set up uh, the tax regime tax uh, or status tax or uh, uh, rate and all those things so the first step is to define the tax regime so i'll start with uh, defining the tax regime so already i have just defined uh, uh, one as an example case so i'll take that as an example Uh, so, so this is the regime that I have created. So I have just uh, given name for the regime, and I have selected this as an uh, United States. And apart from that, uh, we have uh, option to select this based on the business unit or based on the legal entity. So I have selected in this case uh, the business unit. So apart from these two cases, we have the other option where we have the common configuration. so common configuration is nothing but it applies to all the business unit or all the uh, it is kind of a global setup where we can use it uh, but uh, since we have configured our business unit i have taken uh, bu specific uh, uh, tax regime so i have taken uh, kk business unit and uh, the other options are like i have uh, given the tax precision and i have given the tax rounding rule that i have chosen as an nearest and apart from that we have uh, the tax exception and all those things so these are like uh, basic configuration so i have just enable this so if you see here here we have another uh, option called rapid uh, setup so rapid setup we have for two things so one is for uh, the common functional setups and the other is for taxation setup so here if you see we will just click the download tax configuration workbook so where we can see all those uh, setups that we can fill it in excel sheet and we can load so to load the uh, tax configuration so we can uh, give, uh, click on upload uh, tax configuration workbook so after we fill in uh, these details So you are able to see the Excel sheet, right? Now the screen is gone. Not able to. Yeah, uh, I have reshared it. Yes. Yeah, able to see the Excel. Okay. so if you see so these are the basic setups that we have so after we define our uh, tax regime so basically we will define our tax rates and we will give our tax recovery rate and all those things so this is nothing but how we will enter it in the front end similarly we have it here so for few options we will have uh, the kind of a list of value where we can select from the list so tax regime code that we have already created our uh, own code so that we can uh, select so similarly we have other options that we can select from the list so one second uh, yeah one second so uh, this is this is to uh, configure regime to rate completely yeah regime to rate completely uh, if you have uh, multiple tax rates and all those things that you will have to do it again so this is kind of an uh, setup where it will allow us to have the basic configuration so with this we will be able to do the taxation or calculate okay. the tax yeah so you me one thing so with this configuration what i can do in in case if the country is having only 5% of uh, vat no. then i can do this configuration if the country is having multiple rates multiple yeah. rules then we will have to go and do it in the front end yes correct exactly is that right yes correct yeah so that is the purpose of uh, the rapid uh, implementation okay
So okay, so rapid implementation is the one which we will do it through Excel. Yes, correct. So it is nothing but we will just uh, load the values and we will uh, just load in the Fusion application and we will have all the setups available in the system without uh, touching the system. So it is just to minimize our work or uh, to minimize the time. So these are the fields basically we will have. So just to have uh, the tax rate and all those things. So if you see here, we will not have the tax rules. We will have manage taxes and all those things. So only option uh, that we will have is basically the basic configuration will be there. I mean, after we load this uh, particular Excel file. But after that, if we have the multiple options where we will have to default certain uh, tax rate specific to a uh, particular uh, uh, location. So, so uh, that we sorry to stop you. Sorry yeah. to stop you. This is uh, this is loading to an Excel file, or we the correct name is it should be FDB uh, FBDI. No, this is not FBDA. Actually, this is a uh, workbook uh, kind of thing. Like uh, we will download uh, the Excel sheet from the Fusion application, and we will fill this particular sheet, mm -hmm. and again we will load back in the application. Okay, this is not like that uh, FDBI where my macro will be enabled and then we yeah. do that tra transactions and all. It's yeah, not yeah. related to that. Yeah, it okay. is not. Why oh, Excel? Okay, then it's not okay. Fine. FDBI. Fine. Fine. Yeah. Similarly, we will have uh, the what do you call the instruction also. Yeah, so this is about the rapid uh, implementation. So this option we don't have it in R12. So this is new in uh, Fusion, where this is just to you know, reduce our, uh, our human effort. So that's it. So if you see here, we will have uh, the, both the options, download and uh, upload options. So once we are done with our work, then we can uh, load our files. Okay. Yeah, so we, we saw the regime uh, configuration. So regime is simple, just we will give uh, the basic details, uh, like the country specific and uh, how do we want to configure it. Uh, so that's all about it. And uh, we will move to taxation part, uh, basically the tax configuration, where we will default our uh, taxes. We will set, we will try to set up the tax rules. Okay, so I have selected the tax regime that we created on the earlier setup. So this will be de defaulted based on the configuration that we set up uh, on our earlier configuration. And I just gave uh, the tax name and uh, from the list I can select uh, the VAT. So if you have new things like maybe the GST part, if you want to add, we have a lookup. So part, uh, one, one more thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, one more thing. I just wanted to understand few items for the tax configuration. Okay, so for the fusion tax, first you tell me what are the, what are the uh, prerequisite, what should be available in system 
to do this fusion uh, fusion tax that part is not so clear for me maybe if you can just walk me through then it will okay. make more sense because we directly jumped into that fusion tax but, but to have fusion tax what are the things mandatorily we like uh, legal entity ledger and then yeah pay. so something yeah. like that you tell so that yeah so before starting the fusion uh, taxation configuration basically we need to have uh, the gl module yeah. and the payable module already set up uh, so be because the taxation part will apply on the payable module or the receivable module so in order to have this we need to enable our uh, configure our general ledger and uh, payable so unless we configure our uh, general ledger module we cannot uh, proceed with our uh, payable uh, configuration since we have uh, the ledger and uh, the legal entity configuration so in uh, okay can GL... we do a tax in directly in gl is there any possibility no, any no. Uh, only work around maybe we no. can do is that uh, manually passing the jv using the account code combination but apart from that tax application will not be enabled in uh, uh, gl module okay okay maximum maximum what you said what we can do is pass the jv yes. using account code combination yeah because if if you see here let's say we have an uh, taxation account and mm. if this is hitting the credit of uh, our uh, payable modules the similar entry we can make it in uh, general ledger module so that we can do it but similarly how we have the tax application where we have an option to calculate the tax so that is not available in general ledger module so that will be available only in payable or the receivable modules i mean the sub ledger modules but not on the general ledger okay yeah yeah so in gl basically we we saw there are a few steps involved in completing the configuration so that is like we will start with the value set so after we configure our value set maybe we will decide like uh, uh, our uh, segment should be 4 or 5 or 6 that we will define our structure and then based on that we will define our value set once the value set is defined we will uh, set up our uh, chart of account structure based on the structure we will define uh, the coa instance so after this is completed, then we will deploy and uh, we will create the calendar. So once the calendar part is done, so we will uh, go with uh, creating uh, the, unless we have the sub ledger accounting uh, customization uh, requirement is there, we can directly go into our uh, general ledger setup. <coughs> that is defining our ledger. So once the ledger is defined, we will assign the legal entity to the ledger. So maybe we can add that again depends on our individual structure uh, client based or the customer uh, specific uh, requirement so basically we will attach the legal entity with the uh, ledger so after we do this we will have the uh, set of ledger options to be different like setting up the retaining account and the cumulative translation account and all those things. so after we do uh, after we complete this part then we will have to uh, maybe if we wanted to have the secondary ledger so that we have it as an option uh, that but that is an optional setup that is not a mandatory one so after we complete this we we will have to review this particular uh, ledger setup and we will have to submit this uh, program so this program will generally or uh, basically it will create an uh, cubical value for this ledger so based on this system will generate uh, each cubical value whenever we are posting an uh, transaction against this ledger so after this we will have to give the uh, role to the particular user let's say we have uh, four uh, uh, employees in the company where one guy will be working on the jv entry and uh, one guy may be working on the financial statements so according to their role, we will have to customize the role and we will have to assign this customized role to the user. So after that, after we assign the role and again, we have another setup called manage uh, use data access for the user. So where we will attach the particular customized role to the user. So after this is done, we will have to open the period. So once the period is open, then we are good with uh, having the basic uh, uh, manual JVs uh, or the GL configuration will be completed by this. 
so after we complete the gl configuration then we will have the payable configuration so payable similarly we have you are you are explaining all this with showing only only this screen right you are not changing any screen yeah yeah i am not uh, changing i mean if you want i can show with screen also yeah uh, no, this you... is fine you have already shown all those configurations right before yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 You can continue. You can okay. continue. So, so no. Okay. So, so high level. What we have told is like we have to configure all the sub ledger modules and the ledger, and then we we can directly come to that uh, tax uh, fusion tax module, right? To configure the tax. Yes. Okay. So, so in this one, I just have one more doubt. Uh, do do we? Okay. So, after configuring all the sub ledger and the ledgers. then we directly come and we can do a rapid implementation toolkit uh, with an excel we upload all the basic configurations and this yeah. is ready correct yeah. yes. so after yeah. this is ready then it is ready for uh, tax uh, uh, you know creation whenever we create an api invoice or ar invoice we can use a tax classification code and it will automatically calculate the tax so this yes. is a basic configuration you are teaching you are yes. speaking about yes correct Yes, so may, may, maybe after that regime to rate setup we may have to uh, uh, i mean rapid with the rapid implementation maybe we can do regime to rate apart from that this uh, what to say uh, determination factor set and condition set and then rules all those things will have to be done manually through the screen or how it is yeah it should be done manually in this screen uh, it is not available in the excel sheet uh, so if okay you, yeah if you see that excel sheet also we will not have a column called tax rules but we will have the tax rate tax recovery and all those options but not the tax rules so tax okay. rules needs to be set up uh, here in the screen so you, if you see here here we will have the tax rule defaultation so this is the place where we can default our uh, taxation so basically the excel is only for uh, the the uh, uh, basic configuration so where we will upload and we will have uh, the data here so based on those data maybe we can uh, set up the tax rules and uh, other options yeah fine yeah is that fine or do we have any question no it's fine okay uh so i mean or do we want to uh, i mean do i want to say about uh, the payable part i mean the prerequisite or uh, or should i continue here what do you ask do you do you do uh, no do you should want I, to show no the prerequisite uh, for uh, this one tax configuration so basically we told about uh, the uh, gl part right so similarly do we need uh, the ap part or uh, can we go with the taxation uh, configuration hello masking what you have shown saji your voice is your voice is not clear there is a lot of disturbance in your voice yeah it is uh, breaking a bit actually Yes, yeah, Sajish. Yeah, yeah. Is it clear now? Yeah, now it is fine. Okay. So what I am saying is, if you are going to show the same thing which you hmm. you have you know demonstrated in the previous classes, then it's okay. We okay. can continue. If you are going to show something new, then you can show here. 
no no the same thing i was just start uh, trying to say uh, no so thing. what you will what you will basically do is you what you are telling is you will go and uh, configure the subledger ap right yeah and then you will do the tax configuration yeah is yes, correct so I, if I, you have covered that first part ap in your uh, in previous lecture mm. there is nothing different that you are going to show then directly you can jump to tax yes there is nothing you uh, i mean we have seen it yeah okay so maybe i'll uh, uh, start with the uh, taxation yeah. part so so one, only one thing is once after you move to ar no Yeah. As when you move to AR, at that time you show an intercompany also because intercompany is pending in AP. So we yeah, just yeah, wanted to see the company yeah. works. So yeah. That you show in when when you complete AR, at that time you can show that. Okay, okay, fine, fine, not a problem. Fine, yeah, yeah. Let's continue on this one. Okay. Yeah. So on the AP, uh, sorry, it's not on AP. Basically, the ta tax type, uh, if you see here, we will have uh, the different uh, classification. so this is nothing but a lookup called dot uh, at set so where we can define and we will uh, get it uh, here that's right and uh, the start date i'm just mentioning at uh, first of january and here if you see we will have the enable tax for uh, simulation and we have enable tax for uh, transaction so unless we select this option we will not uh, be able to use this particular setup in our ap configuration So we should enable this option, enable tax for the transaction. So apart from that, uh, these are like uh, the earlier uh, configuration that what we gave uh, country and it is. So one one more point: this yeah. enable tax for transaction yeah. is it uh, something similar to the e business art wall? Yeah. Make tax available for transaction. Is that yes. the one? Yes, yes, exactly same thing. so this should be enabled only at the last right after the configuration basic yes. configuration is done then only we have to enable this right yes yes correct uh, after we complete our uh, tax rules and the tax accounts and all those configuration then we will mm. enable this enable uh, tax for simulation so after that we will see this uh, enable tax for transaction enable so once okay. this is done we will have to enable at uh, the tax rule uh, uh, setup also we should enable as an applicable so these are the two primary things so unless we give this we will not be able to do it and another thing is that these are uh, one time setup we cannot change it again so by mistake okay. if we have uh, not enable this option or this as a not applicable we cannot uh, redo it so maybe we should uh, start from the beginning and uh, apart from that we have the tax authority so we will just uh, create the vendor and we will say classification as an tax authority and i have just uh, attached it here so i have used the uh, same <coughs> same authority for uh, the reporting and collecting usually it will be different but in this case i have just used as an uh, same yeah and uh, apart from that we have uh, few why you are thinking that it will be different reporting tax authority and collecting tax authority no in few cases like uh, it is country specific actually yeah yeah so some cases yeah, correct. yeah yeah it is not for all the cases maybe if you think about uh, uh, you know gulf countries and all reporting yeah. and collecting both will be same yeah there it will be same correct. because it is only one authority whereas if you take uh, uh, you know uh, india where we have gst which is uh, you know central and state tax so the reporting and collecting will be will get changed yeah that's what uh, the the localization part like country yeah, yeah. yeah yes correct correct yeah okay yeah. yeah then we have and one the, more point one yeah. more point regarding that uh, simulation part so when we enable simulation yeah. where can we go and simulate uh, do we have a specific screen for that to run a simulation or it's just a, a setup that's it no it is uh, just setup i think i mean i haven't tried uh, simulating the taxation part um yeah there should be some place where we can yeah. go maybe yeah you can check with someone 
uh, where we can do the tax simulation, which which side, maybe which role will have the taxes and all. So that uh, you know, normally we have in R12 we have that simulation part, but that is not uh, uh, it is separate responsibility. We have a tax simulation responsibility. Maybe the same way we have a tax simulation role here in Fusion, so that role can do some uh, you know. Uh, so normal transaction uh, test transaction and then see whether tax is working or not okay so tax so uh, simulation in the sense without entering the transaction so how this is behaving so that's yeah, how we want yeah. To yeah yeah right right okay maybe i'll check and i'll get that yeah yeah where you were showing the setting of uh, the reporting and the collecting one yeah here yeah. tax information Oh, okay. Yeah, continue. Yeah. So there, there you uh, assign the legal entity. No, this is not legal entity. So I have created a uh, vendor with uh, tax authority classification. So same okay. thing. I have attached it here. I am thinking reporting tax authority. collecting tax so collecting tax authority is the one to whom our company should pay and reporting tax authority is the one to whom we should send the reports no reporting. i'm thinking why, why how come tax authority could be different for collecting and reporting no it it is like collecting is like we are receiving and reporting is like we are uh, what do you call it, it is inward and outward basically so if you see this uh, input tax credit and all those things if it is inward so where we will have uh, two way communication so oh, this, so this is the input and output tax concept yeah if we have those things so that that, that will uh, do some transactions right uh, so basically we will run few reports and uh, we will generate it so we will have to file to the government and all those things so for that we will have the inward and the outward uh, flow okay sajish in i didn't understand this in the alchaya concept can you explain see reporting tax authority is something our uh, sakat there we will go and we will have to submit that this is the uh, vat we collected from the okay. customers okay and collecting authority is a refund part where we go and uh, claim our refund in the via vat returns so that's okay. what so both are sakat only for if you take the ksa both will be sakat only entity so we go and we will submit the tax there uh, returns there and we will say in the reporting authority we will go and report oh, this is a you know uh, total purchase this is the total sale and we have collected this much we have paid this much so whatever is remaining that is payable to the government collecting part is something which we wanted to take a tax refund maybe we have done some inter company transfer and mm. maybe some other entity will claim tax or we will have to go and pay the tax so that will be taking under the collecting tax authority part so we will we will assign a vendor here So yeah, normally we will have to create that uh, tax authority as a vendor. So ah, if it is okay. Sakat, then we will have to create them as a vendor. But see, there are two things. Either you can see uh, 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 what is it? Arun. You yeah. just correct me. Do we do do we need to create a vendor or do we need to assign a legal entity here? No, here it is vendor actually. Uh, so legal entity in the sense like uh, how are we saying? I mean, I couldn't uh, get it. no legal entity in the sense let's say i i have a uh, uh, okay so i have an entity that entity is only for the taxation purpose if in case i created one entity okay. for the taxation purpose so do i give that legal entity here or we we have to create a vendor in that legal entity and that assign that vendor here how it is no here i have a, a created a vendor and i have assigned but uh, <coughs> what you are saying is also correct if we have a different uh, entity so then we will uh, create as an legal entity and uh, we can attach that as well i think but i feel, what i am thinking is 
what sajish told first i guess sajish also meant the same what i am thinking ki reporting tax authority can be one entity and the collecting tax authority can be a different entity altogether maybe collecting is yes. been done under maybe yeah. like like how we have rb2 rb2 maybe a reporting hmm. entity and rb1 can be a collecting entity so that way we can i don't so i some i i am thinking vendor i don't think because vendor will come only in terms of a withholding tax when we are doing it no at that time we correct, will have correct a correct vendor created to pay the to pay to the uh, authorities as for, for part of a withholding tax but for reporting tax authority and collecting tax authority i doubt because i don't think vendor will come over here mostly it will be a legal entity but uh, anyway uh, arun can check and compare okay fine Um, Arun, you tell this. You tell. You check this and tell us, huh? Yeah, in yeah. The next correct. class, because this is a very common concept in Alsha for us. That's why. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I remember. Uh, maybe I'm confused about. I'm not sure, but uh, I remember that I created uh, this session. Uh, um, Yeah, but maybe I could have confused with uh, withholding tax also. Maybe I'll check and I'll look under. Yeah, yeah. I think you confused with the withholding tax, so it is yeah. actually uh, entity only. So no, either I think it will be a legal entity or an operating unit or a business unit. So that's what I believe. But you okay. can check and yeah. come back. Okay. yeah but uh, this this thing is fine right like reporting and uh, the collecting authority yeah yeah that is fine yeah just just clarify it next class and we'll okay. go, go yeah yeah sure okay so is it, the here we have uh, basically the uh, five uh, tabs so each have a uh, different uh, set of configuration so if you see here we will have the controls so controls in the sense like how do we want to enable or control our taxation part so the first thing is that uh, taxation part uh, when do we want to basically do the taxation so do we want at the accounting part or the delivery so delivery is nothing but our receipt and all this our invoice or the payment uh, so i have just selected as an invoice and uh, tax inclusion method so tax inclusion method is like whether we wanted to have as an inclusive or non inclusive so how do we want it to have so i have just selected this as a non inclusive and uh, we have the tax rounding over it so earlier uh, set up we gave the tax rounding so that is nearest so if we wanted to override so maybe we can override it and uh, we have the tax uh, calculation so let's say we have an invoice so which has two lines and if we want to uh, override for a particular line so that we can allow this option allow override uh, calculated tax lines and uh, we have the manual tax lines so if we want to enter so that that is available and use legal registration number and all those things so i haven't enabled any of this option yeah okay yeah and apart from that uh, all are like uh, only the exception part and these things so the next option that we have is uh, tax rule so basically here i have just selected the uh, bill from because i don't have uh, the p2p uh, thing configured since i have only uh, the or uh, this all uh, only the invoicing part, uh, yeah i have clicked uh, bill from and uh, this should be applicable so that we can use this particular uh, setup uh, or the tax classification in ap model ap or ar and apart from that we have a few defaultation setup so unless we have this default so so we will have to uh, do a manual work every thing so this is also kind of a uh, manual i mean mandatory setup that we have to do it so the first option is tax uh, jurisdiction so i'll just show here so if you see here we have the jurisdiction code and we will just say the geography that is united states 
and uh, we will set this as a default and maybe if we have uh, uh, the uh, stats account so that we will define it here so we will attach the ledger and we will attach the business unit and we will give the respective uh, quotes so that is uh, tax liability code and uh, the second option that we have is uh, tax status so tax status is nothing but we will just uh, give a naming convention about the tax uh, status of this. So I will just show this one. So that's what we will just uh, give name and we will uh, default this particular tax code and uh, the final option that we have is tax rate so let me show this for uh, the options Yeah, so after we create uh, our tax code, maybe we can attach it here, or if you want to create, we can just create and we can default. And uh, here, tax rate type, we have three options. So, uh, I mean, the, the standard one that we will use is that uh, percentage. So, apart from that, we have uh, the other options also, like to enable a quantity or the unit price. So if you are using the unit price, then we will have to define a schedule and based on that uh, system will pick the unit price and calculate the tax rate. So here in this case, I have uh, uh, opted for a percentage. And I have enabled this for O2C and uh, P2P so that I can use this at uh, P2P cycle or O2C cycle. And if we enable this as uh, expenses, so we can use this at uh, expense report as well. And we will give the tax percentage and uh, we will say set as an uh, default. And uh, apart from that, we will have the tax accounts. So we will uh, attach the tax account. So in this case, I have enabled the tax liability account. So apart from that, we have if we have the interim tax account and all those things, we can attach it here. Yeah, so these are the setups. So these are the three mandatory setups uh, that we will have to do it. Yeah, so this is second setup. So we are done with our uh, second setup. So with this, basically, we can uh, enable, uh, uh, I mean, we can create our uh, invoice and we can calculate the taxation. So apart from that, we have a few other setups as well, like uh, tax rates and the recovery rate if we wanted to have, like the input tax credit and the other options which we wanted to have. So we have setups for this. So I, I did set up only for uh, the basic configuration that is for uh, tax regime and uh, tax rate. So apart from that, uh, we have uh, the, the special rate if we want to enable so that we can set up. But the options, if you see, all are uh, similar. Like you will just uh, select the business unit, what we configured, and uh, we will just select the tax code, uh, what we configured there. So similar setup. Is it is it complete? Like you have you have created like you have uh, set up a regime and you have assigned it to a BU. Yeah, yes, correct. It's done. 
yeah these are the two matters so where uh, assignment part where, uh, can you please go again i actually missed that assignment part assignment and then so bu into bu yeah yeah we you here we are assigning and we are taking this regime and we are attaching to the tax rules i'll just show from here yeah yeah just show from here yeah here i have assigned uh, this as an party specific that is for the business unit uh, kk business unit okay but party specific it can be either business unit or it can be legal entity also right yes correct okay okay fine just wanted to see this okay and one more thing yeah just go back to the previous screen not this one the previous screen yeah, okay one minute Uh, yeah here only this rapid sp uh, setup spreadsheet is there no yeah so just click on that so here only we can go and upload the tax configuration work yes correct download and upload okay okay suggest so, okay. if there are like more than one rate say in case of uh, case a how we have 5 and 15 then in that case we have to set up two regimes right and assign it to be no 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 we can set up one regime and then create only two rates that's it. and create two rates okay okay yeah yeah uh, okay. okay okay got it yeah continue yeah uh, you want to see the excel sheet or uh, we, we no, can... no 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 not record not record we can do yeah uh -huh. i just wanted to see uh, what are the options available the rapid okay just click on that uh, download regime subscription uh, spreadsheet regime Uh, tax implementation, tax configuration. So, which one we do normally? So, we will for the basic one, tax configuration. Configuration. Okay. Okay. Fine. And what is the difference between tax configuration and tax implementation workbook? It is. Uh, I mean, it's almost uh, similar, right? Like so, tax uh, configuration is after uh, creating our regime and all those things. So, the second option is this one. and uh, the tax implementation is almost uh, similar to what uh, we we have it uh, there it is like uh, tax registration number and if we have the party classification and the party reporting code the the additional information basically so i'll just uh, show from here okay no issues no issues leave, leave it yeah i uh, got it anyway those information will be already available in the excel we just have to take it and yeah uh, right yeah so if you see this exceptions and uh, the party specific uh, classification so this will be part of that uh, implementation so that will be uh, kind of an uh, additional information or the optional setups so only regime and uh, this two are uh, uh, mandatory setup so that we will have two sheets so one is tax regime and the other one is uh, tax yeah here uh, we can see, uh, only this two are uh, mandatory fine right can yeah, okay, we move okay. to invoice yeah yeah we can move to invoice Sajish, if if say yeah. KSA needs five and fifteen, similarly yeah. if say UAE needs zero and five, then yeah. there is a need to create two regimes, right? Obviously, yeah, correct, because they are correct, correct. two different countries. Yes. But there is also a way to use the same regime if 
the rates are same then we can use it for multiple bus and legal entities yeah correct regime can be set up at a geography also if you wanted to keep the same mm. regime you can set it up for middle east as a geography mm. Mm -hmm. and you can put 5 0 and 15 in that uh, regime yeah 5 0 and 15 all the rates whatever is there all the rates which is applicable for ksa uae and accordingly anyone will, like ksa will use 5 and 15 and 0 uae yes. will use 5 and 0 so but, but the problem is all the rates will be applicable in all the entity so it will show they will have to select which one is correct uh, Okay. Ah, uh, this is what I guess Kaushik was telling that I that yeah, is yeah. the reason why I didn't want to use the same regime because it will show. Yes, correct. But for us, it is okay. Even if it has shown, it's fine because anyway, it is same country only. It's not a different country. We were asking him to configure country ways, not OU ways, but he configured OU ways. Regime. Regime should not be configured OU ways. It should have been configured country ways. Correct. Correct. Yeah. But these people have done it OU ways. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I remember. Yeah, yeah. That's why he were. That's why we were telling him it's okay. Even if a different OU sees these two percentages, because it's okay. It is applicable to them. Yeah. But they were telling that it won't come country ways. I didn't understand why they were saying like that. So now I wanted to ask that question to Arun only. Arun. Yeah. yeah we yeah. can ask him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Arun, in the tax regime, right? Yeah. Uh, we can configure uh, based on country ways right not based on the ou and bail it yeah i can configure regime based on the country yeah country is part of the setup actually so okay let's say let's take one scenario okay i have a country as uae okay, okay. in uae i have three bus okay but i wanted to create only one regime and assign all the three bus under one regime is it possible Yeah, yeah, that is possible. Like, let's say you have uh, one ledger. Under one ledger, you have one legal entity, and under uh, one legal entity, you have three business. In, I mean, the operating unit. So in this yeah. case, you oh, can just. Oh, okay. Yeah, in I case, got it. So Abhishek, Abhishek, the issue was, uh, I got it, yeah. uh, Arun. Abhishek, issue was what? See, this is the configuration I told them, but the issue is related to the ledger because. Ideally, UAE there should have been only one ledger, but here unfortunately we created three ledger for three different owners. Mm -hmm. But you shouldn't you you shouldn't create three different ledger, whereas you could have split by OU only or BU. But they instead of splitting by OU or BU, they created one to one configuration like eleven eight. That's the reason we were not able to do the tax configuration properly, country wise. And that is the reason why they went with uh, regime. For each, uh, each OU, yeah, or each OU, OU. or each ledger, yeah. So if if regime needs to be uh, made applicable to a country, then it's better to have single okay. ledger under that country for three different OUs. Correct. Correct. Okay. Because of that one wrong configuration, there are so many problems, right? Because of that one wrong configuration only, uh, RMS is not able to do that VAT registration concept also. For mm. VAT region, VAT group, they said that uh, within the same VAT region, uh, VAT should not shouldn't get calculated. If you would mm. have configured based on the OU wise within one ledger, mm. then there should have not been issue. This would have been solved in RMS itself. They don't need a CR. Mm. Since they have configured like this, every ledger, every OU assigned to one OU has created a problem. Correct. Hmm. Okay, but anyway, we cannot do anything now. It has been already configured. Now only in future we can change. Okay, continue. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So I have uh, just created an invoice for the amount of ten uh, thousand, and uh, we can just click. Uh, Calculate tax, or we can click validate. If we click validate, system will say needs revalidation because the tax will calculate on the ten thousand dollars. So I'll just click calculate tax, and we will have for uh, the amounts generated. So it is loading.
Yeah, so here we can see that uh, this is for 500 and the total has changed and we can check this in taxes. So this is our rate that is KK VAT at 5% and this is for 5% it is uh, 500 and we have our regime and the other details. And here, if we want to overwrite, we can overwrite this because we enable this uh, at uh, tax configuration. So if we have disabled it, we will not be able to overwrite this option. And uh, another thing is like, let's say we have different line and if we want to uh, set the classification so that we can enable it here for uh, each line, I mean line wise we can uh, select the taxes that is 5% or 10%. So we can uh, just change the amount and uh, we can validate. Hello. Yeah, Aaron, we can hear yeah. you. Okay. Yeah, this is kind of an uh, artificial intelligence actually, which uh, Oracle has set up. So if you say, what is it? Uh, this is kind of an AI, actually Oracle has set up. So if uh, the invoice details, whatever we are giving, it is similar to the other invoice, it will give an alert and it will put a hold also saying that uh, invoice has been created already with the invoice number uh, something, 12 or whatever it is. So maybe we can click continue or we can review it also. The system so, will sorry, under. so what 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 it will happen is once after you calculate tax on the invoice, if that okay. same invoice is there, mm. no, maybe like, with the same invoice number for the same supplier or with the same amount for the same supplier, it will show another. Yeah. So basically, I have selected the same uh, business unit supplier, and uh, only the invoice number is different. Even the amount and everything is same. Accounting date term. Um, and the distribution set, everything is same. So system is saying that uh, the invoice has been created already with the invoice number 12. Do you want to proceed or what is what system will ask. So we can just click validate and uh, we can do it. So it honestly is speaking, honestly speaking, this is not an AI account, I would say. Oracle, what they would have done is they would have gone through the back end, identified whether for the same supplier any invoice is there with the, for the same amount, then it will throw an alert. <laughs> Maybe they would have increased their processing speed. That's why it is able to process. Otherwise, you know, if you create some custom program, it will run for ages. Now, uh, due to this cloud, they have a full infra and they would have run with uh, good processes. So it has a very good processing speed. As you, as you told that we have a cube database also. So they would have utilized all those functionalities and came up with a concept. But the AI, I, I don't say if it is AI, then what it should do is it should be automatically creating an invoice thinking that, yeah, there is an invoice which is coming like this every month. <laughs> okay, just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. So This is Oracle's level of AI, Sajish. <laughs> yeah, at least Oracle has some, done something after so long. I, I feel, I feel the way Oracle has designed or whatever done with this cloud fusion, is there any work for developers? <laughs> there is no work for any developer to do anything, I guess. Yeah, developer, uh, when they have the integration only, they have work. Apart from that, uh, we have all other options that uh, minimize almost all the migration and all those activities. So even the reporting part, it is simplified actually. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so that's it. What else? On, uh, the fusion tag. Uh, so if you're okay, maybe we can uh, see the reporting. Uh, thing. Yeah. So I would like to highlight one more point. Uh, yeah. 
see we we even have one ad- additional functionality of co- cross currents correct yeah yes correct yeah I, uh, yeah so which means if i create an invoice in usd i can make a payment in g in, in fusion you are saying yeah in fusion yeah fusion it is available yes correct it is there yeah so that is one functionality yeah i just wanted to highlight because i have just gone through and i got it yeah yeah it is not so if we have created a invoice in gbp we can make a payment in usd as well yes correct any cross currency you can make no issues it won't throw an error but in ebs r12 what happens is if an invoice is created in usd then you have to make a payment in usd so which means you have to configure the account the bank account everything in usd uh, and uh, that account is eligible for usd uh, bank payments and then uh, you have to make a payment and the uh, payment will be payment will be created in usd only uh, okay. but but see even if you wanted to see account is different even you can enable that account as a multi currency account while making payment but still mm. the payment will be recorded in usd so here what happens is i create a gbp and i i say that my company is a very small i don't have a multi currency account even though mm. i receive an invoice in gbp i told my bank uh maybe i will do a net transfer of uh, net banking transfer or through a wire transfer of uh, kwd but the bank you will tell the bank you convert that into gbp and uh, you know send it to the supplies bank like that they can have a deal so always okay. Will, okay. the payment will be dispersed from the account of let's say alshay in kwd and it will be credited to supplier in gbp hmm mm. but but we will record the payment in kwd kwd okay. so our in our bank statement basically all debit and credit will be always in kwd kwd If, they will yeah they will always put a exchange rate on it and then commission everything and they will send us the slip so okay. we have to do a reconciliation is it is it the right understanding arun yeah yes correct exactly whereas currently in alsha if it is gbp matlab sab kuch gbp mein hi record hoga yes correct the all many the new concept have come advert no intuition it is implemented maybe it's good these people are not trying only na anything new we have to read and understand only no okay, not only that even this fusion is fusion does not deserve our users that's it <laughs> fusion does not deserve to you know be with our users you know about our users right how they will work seriously for them fusion even if you present this <laughs> if you present this concept as a additional feature they will <laughs> Desmond will ask why? Why you are giving? <laughs> no, Desmond will suddenly come and tell. As per the IFR standard, this is uh, against the policy which against we are the... following. Something he will tell. <laughs> okay, Arun. Yeah, yeah continue. Even, Sorry, even, we are even for even for even for the tax calculation part. Right? Just now, Arun was saying about that uh, artificial intelligence, right? Uh, Hmm. Desmond or Sajib may say you switch it off because we are getting too much of messages like that. We, <laughs> we don't want that feature. <laughs> so, sorry, my question to that is: yeah. in case if the users are asking that I don't want this functionality, how we will go and switch it off? I mean, that is inbuilt actually. We cannot change it. Like uh, system will See. read uh, basically the flow. Uh, if all the details are similar to the uh earlier invoice or the invoice just created as a draft so system will say that uh, with this details already invoice has been created so do we want just, to just, okay just imagine a situation where i'm creating a recurring invoice every day as a rent payment so rent will be always same supplier will be same a currency yeah. will be same only the invoice number is different so in that case every month you are saying that this alert will come no no this will not come on that case because their invoice has been created at one shot but here if you see i'm i'm creating uh, on a daily basis different cases so here if the invoice is same then system will give alert but for the recurring invoice it is uh, different like if no i will tell you one more scenario see recurring invoice i just told for a standard product okay. so maybe i am saying that if the invoice is for the rent payment it is coming from the property manager module okay it okay. is a different module so that module will every day, every month send me the same invoice uh, rent amount Which I no. have to make a payment to the landlord. So in that case, every month I will get the same invoice. Keep on getting only the invoice number changes, but the invoice will be keep on creating every month. So in that yeah. case, will the error come? 
no even at that case it will not come because it is uh, been interfaced from the different module but in this case we are creating it manually since we are creating okay, it only if you are creating it manually then it will come yeah then it will come because system will just uh, uh, try to avoid the duplication so that is the idea behind it okay okay then in that case little bit of artificial intelligence i can <laughs> okay proceed So I'll, I'll just start with report. So we start uh, last week, I think. So we we'll just start over from there. So I'll start with uh, the administration. So here we have uh, different, uh, what do you call the access related and. Uh, uh, the configuration to uh, our uh, server and all those things. So I'll start with the security. So here we have a few privileges basically. Yeah, so these are the privileges uh, that has been assigned uh, to us. So based on the role that uh, we have created. So I have assigned uh, the BA administrator role so that I can create the report. Uh, so that was the issue. So when we are creating the report, it was saying insufficient uh, privilege. So I have assigned it. So now I have uh, this uh, access. So if you see, 